Welcome to the Caregiven Podcast. I'm Inga. And I'm Julie. And long story short, we have Caregiven. We are two mom entrepreneurs who have built an in-home care business from the ground up, guided every step of the way by God's care and fueled by agape love. Almost 14 years later, we felt called to create this podcast as a resource for families with caregiving needs. Whether you care for a family member or are looking for advice on professional caregiving, we want this to be a platform to support you. Each week, we will come to you with encouraging stories of families who have found the right balance for their loved ones, tips for how to care for them and you, and much more. We hope you continue to join us each week as we share in this exciting new journey together. Hello, Sunshines, and hello, Julie. How are you today? I'm good, Inga. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, the sun is hopefully kind of shining. Oh, it's yeah. It's peeking out a little bit. Yeah, it's actually crazy how uh, warm it's been for this time of the year. Yeah, I'm actually very much enjoying the place that I'm sitting right now because <laughs> I can feel the sun on my back. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's glorious. Yes, it always yeah. helps with good attitudes when you see the sun shining. It really does. Yeah. And unfortunately in the flathead, at times we get a little socked in in the winter. So a little bit of an inversion. When that sunshine comes out, we have to really grab onto it. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, I've been thinking. You have? Yeah. What, what would you do if you won the lottery? Oh my, that's a loaded question. Yeah. Let's see. If I won the lottery, uh, first off, I'd make sure that uh, the kids' college got paid. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I would, choice. I would like to expand the ranch. Yes, and I am. I, I think of um, several people. I'd love to take a huge family cruise or something Aww. where everybody was together and and just had some joy. Because there's nothing better than when my family gets together. Oh, I love that. Oh, and then I'm sure that I could just keep going on. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but I am happy to hear you'd be responsible. <sighs> yep. Yes, I, I actually would. <laughs> Because I would, well, I would probably have to get myself a, a bookkeeper immediately. Yes. So I had somebody to be accountable to. Yes. Yeah, so you got to get that cash flow right. Yeah. So you mm-hmm. don't. Taxes, you know. Yeah. The realities of the big windfall. Yes. I'm happy to know though, when you, if you win the lottery, that you've got it under control and yeah. you're not going to be one of those people that it just spins out on. Nope. 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 We, we've got you. We'll keep you in <laughs> check. I know you would. <laughs> What about you? Oh my gosh. Um, So it is my new retirement plan. So I've been thinking a lot about it. Um, I actually love to think about winning the lottery because I think about like all of the people in my life and how they've made a difference for me and what I would do to give back to them. Mm. Um, It's so cute. Actually, there's a little Conoco store by the office, right? And, And I was talking with the gal that is the manager there and told her that it was my new retirement plan. And she said, um, if you win the lottery, could you, would you bring back the drive in? Oh, the drive-in movie theater. Oh, yes. So that would be a top priority for right. sure. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Actually, when Kevin and I started the motorcycle shop years and years ago, um, one of our mentors had said that you always have to give back. Yeah, so absolutely. It's, it's just fun to think about. And mm-hmm. of course, that would include my family and, and a lot of the things that you're talking about too, expanding our sheep farm, ranch, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, just making a big a big farming compound, something like that. <laughs> yes, yes. One thing about giving is, as we know, and it was actually pastor's um, discussion just this past Sunday was basically just give, give. The more you give, the more you reap and sow yep. just because of just who we're supposed to be. Yeah. And, and how great does it feel to give? Oh, it's just, I, it's just fun. It's, it's a fun thing. I, I love Christmas, uh, not for my gifts, but to give them. And I'm yes. so excited. I have to hide them for myself so I don't give anybody theirs too I, early. I know. I'm <laughs> guilty of that too. You buy like way early and then you just can, you just can't keep it to yourself. Yeah. You just have to give it. Uh, but anyway, well, uh, you know what? It's actually, that's a great question for the day. And I'm going to skip over verse of the week. We'll come back to that because I have to share my good news story. And I've always said that if there are good news stories that happen in our community, they for sure will be on my radar and will be talked about. Nice. So, um, as you know, Julie, um, housing is just, we're at a, an all time crisis level in this community. And I think, you know, in the state and really in the nation, there's just a big housing crisis going on. Mm -hmm. Um, So you know that there's a a hotel that had kind of been turned into like a long-term or an extended stay um, type residence situation facility. Mm -hmm. And that hotel has actually been sold. So in that 
happening and that transaction happening, there are many, many people who are being displaced. Um, it does sound like I think the intentions are good of what what they want to do with it is to go in and actually turn it into more of a housing type situation. Um, but that being said, there's still a lot of um, discourse and people being displaced in the interim. And and just know I'm not commenting on either side <laughs> of what's going on because I don't know enough about it to make a comment. But I would say that I've got to read this story because it just is so heartwarming. So it says extended stay residents in Kalispell receive life changing gift days before eviction. In January, extended stay residents at the Fairbridge Inn and Suites in Kalispell were told they were being evicted with just 30 days notice um, due to the sale of the hotel. With affordable housing options severely limited in the Flathead, residents were desperately searching and praying for possible solutions. On Wednesday, those prayers were temporarily answered for 35 households thanks to the gener- to a generous private donation. It's just life-changing, Fairbridge resident Joe told MTN News. Um, Each household desperately searching for answers before eviction day on Saturday received a $10,000 donation from Mm -hmm. Flathead County philanthropists Michael and Jamie Gogan. Now we'll be able to afford to at least get into a hotel while we're waiting to hear back from housing, and we're just grateful, Joe said. The checks were handed out by Community Action Partnership in the Flathead, leaving Fairbridge residents stunned. Mm -hmm. Just thank you to everyone out there in the Flathead that has given us um, the grace of God, the support that we desperately need to know that there are people out there who, who just got a chance. Um, Fairbridge resident Cheyenne was worried that she would be sleeping in a car some Saturday with her newborn baby. Um, she said this money changes everything. It's just a lot, especially when you're a first time parent, and you have a baby and you, you can't just sleep in a car. You have to think for your family and you've got to make sure, you know, there's a warm place. He has a bed and you've just got to make sure to take care of your family. And this is this, this right here will definitely help. Um, David Weber has lived at Fairbridge for the last nine years. He is 100% disabled as in consider- and is considered unemployable. He said the $10,000 gift is a blessing. This is going to free me up a little bit at least to have some freedom of movement after I get a roof back over my head. Weber said all he wants is a chance to return the favor one day to the Gogans. I will catch a bullet for you. You call me. You need me. Oh, somehow uh, I will be there to help you, oh, said Weber. wow. Huh. Yeah. Huh. So anyway... It's a happy-ish ending temporarily to a really, really catastrophic situation. Isn't that something, the gratitude? Oh, yeah. And it always, it comes back to that see a need, fill a need. And um, obviously not everyone has the resources to be able to make that type of a contribution, but um, we can always do something. Wow, what a blessing. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's cool. (laughs) Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, what did you bring for good news? Or yeah, we'll do good news, then we'll do verse. Yes, yes. So my uh, good news was about actually um, a national adoption day where there was a little five-year-old that was living with a family that didn't have any kids or anything, and they were wondering what to do with their future, and they decided that they just loved this little Michael so much that they were going to just bring him into the family for good. And so the... Parents said that their charismatic son has many friends and some of the most gratifying times of the first year together has been the number of children welcoming Michael into their homes and play dates. And so one time when mom was going to drop off um, him at the school, she talked to the teacher and they kind of were thinking about what they could do to make it even better. Well, turns out what they ended up doing was the whole entire class got to go to court to see him be adopted. And they sat there and um, they made big, huge cut out heart shaped things on sticks. And then um, he said that um, some of it, the favorite part of the adoption hearing was when the judge asked people in the room to share their feelings about Michael. And some of them are like, I love Michael. And one said, my name's Steven and Michael's my best friend. Oh. <laughs> and they even had a Santa Claus there for, because there was 37 total families, but Michael was the one that actually brought the whole kindergarten class with him. Oh. And so he just, like, at the end, he just said, I love mommy and I love daddy very much. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah, isn't that sweet? Man, there's nothing in the world like just, feeling included yeah. and, and being part of something. Just, How cool. That was a great idea. Yes. Love it. Thank yes, you for that. You bet. Coolio. Well, we're going to go backwards now. So we're actually going to go to our verse of the week. And this is actually job 12, 12. Is not wisdom found among the aged? Does not long life bring understanding? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, sure. It's does. a short but sweet one, uh, just like that uh, chapter in the Bible. It's it's a short one, but um, basically, when we're talking about um, aging, you know, what I really wish a lot of the times when I go and meet people mm-hmm. is that I would have wished, wished, wished I had met them sooner mm-hmm. when they were young and vibrant and watching the things that they now are telling as stories. Because there's incredible people out there with amazing histories. Oh, I. I agree. And one of the favorite things that I love to do, and we did this with one of our gentlemen that was just turning 100 years old, was um, part of our job description was to sit with him and journal his stories for the family. Wow. And so, you know, out of the, they always say out of the mouth of babes, Mm -hmm. but actually it's, it's the wisdom comes from the mouth of our age. Yes, I agree with that. And I just love being able to go um, into the community and, and with our clients and hear their stories mm-hmm. and learn from them. Mm-hmm. And what's really neat is with our caregiver population, um, you know, we have some caregivers that are on the younger side of things, but the the tips and tricks and pieces and wisdom that they pick up along the way just yep. because of who they're around yep. is pretty incredible. Yep. There's wonderful people out there. You just have to take the time to get to know them. Yes. And the, yeah. the teenage kiddos need to remember that we old people, we do know a thing or two. You know, I love that because my, my youngest daughters actually called me just a couple times this past week and said, you know, the older I get, the smarter you get. And that's, I was laughing because I actually had said that about my mother years ago. Wow. Is the older I get, the smarter she gets. Yeah. And you know, she would love to hear that. <laughs> yes, I'm sure she will. Every be. mother would love she to hear that finally you got through your kid's thick head. She's probably going to rewind this and just watch that again. Wait, I listened I, to that said. 10 times. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's true. It's yes. true. Well, and I've always thought that my grandma Fisher was the wisest woman on the world, oh. on the planet, oh. in the world, always. Yes. She just, she always has the right answer for things and a good perspective. And yeah, she's a good one. Ah. Cool. All right. Well, if you're listening and, or watching and you would like to share a verse with us, please send that to the caregiven podcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Um, send your favorites. Tell us why. If you don't have, there's no real reason. We're happy to <laughs> put our own spin on it. So <laughs> yeah. get those, those sent to us at the caregiven podcast at yes. gmail.com. Yes. Yeah. And today, Jules, today we are talking about living with your um, home care aid or yeah. your caregiver. And I've been thinking a lot about this and I think that it's a lot like living in the sweater that I'm wearing today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uncomfortable at times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the overall package is great. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, thank you for that. <sighs> yeah. I think you picked this topic because, um, it, it's really worth talking about yeah. for one mm-hmm. and understanding that every situation is going to be different. Every personality match is going to be different. And there are things that you can do to help set yourself up and set up your caregiver for success in the long term. but understanding some of the expectations along the way and, and, um, you know, being okay with how you're going to feel about these things, I think is important to know because it is a big thing when you're asking, at a, uh, you know, most of the time, a stranger or inviting them into your home, it can be very invasive. So oh, we wanted to talk about it. Absolutely. And, and this is a topic that we just take for granted mm-hmm. because we've already talked about what to expect when we come in for a home ca- um, care visit, right. the paperwork that we do, you know, all of the stuff that needs to be done to formalize the mm-hmm. relationship. Sure. But then we never went to the next step until today <laughs> about how it's going to be now that we are in the home. Yeah. What is the impact of yeah, that? Yeah. In home? So I think that um, it's it's a good thing because once again, we just take it for granted that somebody's just going to walk in and it's going to work. And, and usually it does. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just actually a very beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. But then there are, are times that and sometimes it's hard. Yeah. And I think that... Um, depending on the individual client's situation is also going to depend on how this all shakes out. You know, having someone come a couple hours a day, a couple times a week is far different than having someone in your home 24 seven. Yeah. What does that look like? Right, right. And so we need to remind everybody that we're non-medical in-home care. And so what does that mean? And truly when the phone rings, we never know what kind of an adventure (laughs) we're going on. Yes. And like you said, we do the two hour visits Mm -hmm. to 24 Mm seven. And so those dynamics are different right there. And when I'm doing a home visitor, and I know when you are too, we're just immediately thinking about the pool of 
caregivers that we have that work here for us mm-hmm. and their personalities and their skill set because it's got to be a match. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And it comes down to even things like, are there animals in the house? Yeah. You know, is the caregiver allergic to cats, but there are cats there. And I mean, there are a lot of little details mm-hmm. that, that we look at, you mm-hmm. know, from an agency perspective before we send somebody out even into the home. Oh my goodness. Smoking is a big mm-hmm. issue. Let's let, you know, just somebody might be allergic to smoke right. or they might just not be able to stand the mm-hmm. smell of it. It gives them a headache. Right. But we have um, caregivers that are smokers. Right. So and we have clients who are smokers yes. as well. So that's a, a factor. And and the way that I like and the way that we do this, our scheduling, and Sammy is the boss. <laughs> She's really good at doing schedules. She is. Um, but I just it's it's like a puzzle. Yes. And we just trying to put all of those pieces together. Mm-hmm. And it's a constantly moving. Yes. puzzle because just for example this week we had a schedule that was going along really just clicking along the <laughs> family loves the client the caregivers they have but then one of them took a vacation yep so that left th- you know two or three shifts yep. that we then had to shuffle things around mm-hmm. to make sure that everybody was cared for yep and so that is a definite thing that we do is basically if we say we're going to be there we have to be there mm-hmm. we don't leave people yeah alone yep So then it's just working that puzzle out. And I will tell you that when I first started this adventure with you, that puzzle literally made me sick to my stomach. (laughs) But I've relaxed a lot. (laughs) In case you hadn't noticed. Oh, goodness. Yeah, you know, there are times that the the hardest part of that puzzle is waiting for a phone call Mm -hmm. from a caregiver who's busy and she doesn't know we've left her a message or or he's um you know out mowing the lawn and we're just like oh we need to know so we can (laughs) put this together and and um that was where you had to learn how to yes just because I would just say it's gonna work it's it's fine. fine and I truly to be honest with you I don't know how it works. It's it's like God <laughs> gets in the middle of our schedule and he helps us every, every time. single time because we'll look at that list and look at that list and look at availabilities and and do some shuffling and and it always And then works. all of a sudden click. The, yeah, what you've been staring at yeah. for well just like this morning from Sammy. Oh, light bulb. Yeah. Hold tight. Yeah. I got an idea. Yeah. And then it just yeah, falls it, into place. It just falls into place and it's just that one call. But our caregivers are amazing mm-hmm. because um and I and I tease people, um, but I'm serious. <laughs> when I'm, I'm doing an interview with a new caregiver, I I just say flexibility has to be our middle name. Oh yeah. And so um, I talk to people very, very um, seriously about home care Mm -hmm. is not an eight to five Monday through Friday job. Right. And so if you need that, this is not the place for you. Right. Uh, That's one thing that we do Mm -hmm. really well is we are really real with people Mm -hmm. and we're just, just honest. Oh yeah. Because I can't hire somebody that has to have 40 hours from nine to three, only in Monday through Friday. It right. doesn't work. The, the math, the math there, doesn't work out. And, and, and our <laughs> yeah. shifts are just, we call it a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Um, also then, you know, if somebody is, has been with us for a long time and then they um, end up passing or going to a nursing home or something, all of a sudden all of those hours are gone. Mm-hmm. So we start again. Yep. And try it as much for continuity. Continuity is really oh, yeah. important. Once you set the schedules, I mean, the whole goal is to leave them yeah. as they are and unless there's a sick call or some something comes yep. up and then you might have to sub someone. But I think a lot of um, the benefit to being part of our care team as a caregiver, when, when we say that flexibility is not only are we asking them to be flexible with us, but I think Sammy does a tremendous job of being flexible with caregivers when you know, they have things come up or Mm -hmm. they need to be with family or they're taking a vacation or, um, so anyway, it definitely is a teamwork makes the dream work situation. Oh, goodness, goodness. So when we go in and do that home visit, we're, we're really hoping that, um, people, uh, first off, you have to be completely honest Mm -hmm. about what your needs are. Mm -hmm. Um, we've done, uh, I did a home care, uh, home visit one time where the family didn't tell me the dad tended to have a, a drinking problem that started you know late in the afternoon and went into the evenings and thankfully the caregiver that went in there saw this and and was able to deal with it was Mm -hmm. just rolled with the punches and um then called us and said uh hey you didn't mention to me that this (laughs) guy um will like to you know get 
a few uh, drinks going there <laughs> and, um, you know, cause that causes other problems and she uh, was good with it. Um, mm-hmm. but when, then when I called the family, they were like, Oh my goodness, we, we didn't tell you because we didn't think you'd help us. Oh. And it was like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Information I, is power. Oh, we my just goodness. Have to know. Oh, my goodness. Because we have people, yeah. caregivers, that are not able or willing to deal with different topics, mm-hmm. you know, like hospice or incontinence issues. You know, everybody's got their special right. skills, their special power. Yeah. And the, so. And, and I think that is so true. I mean, you have to be honest coming out of the, uh, just basically coming out of the home visit, we have to have the most solid, accurate information that we can have. And the thing is, is we can work, we can work with almost anything. Yeah. Uh, We just have to know. Yeah. And, and that helps us to, like you're saying, to be able to, to make that right caregiver match so that, you know, we don't set it up for disaster because we didn't have good information. Yeah. This family was actually quite embarrassed Mm -hmm. that after X amount of drinks, dad got a little lippy or, (laughs) you know, whatever his situation was. And, um, so you have to, know that the person that's coming in to talk to you about the home care is there to help you and going to be part of your village. Oh yeah. And I think the thing is, is there is no judgment, right? None, absolutely zero judgment. We're coming there to help you Yep. and everybody has a story. We don't know what the story is. Mm -hmm. We're just there to help. So don't feel like you have to hide anything, just lay it out. And we're, we're part of your team to, to make it a successful situation. No no guilt, no embarrassment, none of that. I mean, we, like you said, I love what you said we all have a story. Oh yeah. Absolutely. We all have dynamics. My story is when you walk in my <laughs> utility room, it smells like a sheep's butt because we're lambing <laughs> and I can't keep those clothes washed. <laughs> right. Can't That's my story, up. but please don't judge me. <laughs> right. I'll tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So that, that's the big first step. Yep. Be honest. Yeah. And then I think you have to be really down and dirty about stating your preferences and just, again, yeah. being really honest about what you want. And if you know that the the client that we're going to be caring for isn't going to respond to a particular, you know, age group, or if there are things that, that you can tell us about what you prefer, mm-hmm. it's going to help everybody in the end, because we're going to be able to get a better caregiver match for you. Um, you're not going to have to be switching that out later. Mm-hmm. Yep. No, um, household rules. Mm-hmm. Some people are extremely regimented. Oh yes. They, I get up at seven. I want my coffee. Mm-hmm. I, then I read my paper. Then I want my bread with the butter, with the jam to the side yes. and they have their way. Yes. We have to know that. That's makes me think of our one, um, family, that we took care of husband and wife and they had, it was the same meal that they ate every single day. <laughs> every and, day. and actually after, um, when we were no longer there, the family actually gave us the, the framed recipe. Oh, so it was cute. so cute. But yeah, things like that. We have to know mm-hmm. what are your preferences? Because mm-hmm. if we don't know that this is the meal that you eat every single day at 8 a.m. Yeah. sharp, you know, then, then we're set up for failure before we ever get started. We, we have a client right now that is, is a, a 93 year old woman on mm-hmm. hospice. And, um, as I'm talking to the family, um, you know, you don't want to just assume that they'll only take women. Right. And um, because one of the caregivers that she adores the most that's mm-hmm. coming in there is one of our guys. Yeah. And he just is able to talk to her about topics that they really just gelled. He's able to get her in the shower and she doesn't yeah. have any um, worries about that. Mm-hmm. Be- but some people are very, very modest. Yes. And you have to be very cautious that they just don't want mm-hmm. a, a different uh, person, you know, a male with the grandma right or or a female you know it just it's just interesting sure. um the different mentality sure. you know with those kinds of things well and a lot of times what we'll do in those 24 7 situations if there isn't something that's already kind of written down in place about the routine and, mm-hmm. and what's expected we'll ask if we have like a primary or a lead caregiver um to put something together because yep. again that information is power and if you have a structured routine, a regimen that you follow all the time, it just helps everyone be more successful. Yeah, I think we should actually um, describe um, what 24-7s are to oh, yeah. us as, oh, sure. they, as they versus like a live-in. Sure, sure. Yeah, so a 24-7 is actually a situation where we are with a client for a full 24-hour period of time. 
Um, it can be one day a week. It can be seven days a week. It just kind of varies based on what the family needs. Um, but in that 24 hour period, you are only having one caregiver and that caregiver has to be provided with a place to sleep and they have to be able to get at least six hours of sleep. Um, because we want to make sure that everybody is safe. They are able to help throughout the night. Maybe if there's an assistance is needed in getting to the bathroom or maybe there's meds that need, need to be taken at a certain time in the night, um, they can do that. But they do have to be able to get sleep as well. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Is yeah. That what you're yeah. Thinking? No. And then that's a true 24. Yes. When one person comes in. Yes. Now, um, there are 24 sevens. We're with somebody seven days a week, yep. um, but they have, well, let's say Alzheimer's or something, mm -hmm. and they actually start wandering at night. Mm -hmm. So we can't have the same person oh, right. come in for 24 because we can't get them sl yeah. sleep deprived right. for They're safety for both them and the client. Yeah. So then, it, I mean, a lot of times in those situations, we'll break them into 12 hour shifts. Um, we've even taken some and, and made them eight hour shifts, just depending on the intensity level of, of what the caregiver is doing right. during that shift. Right. Because again, we want to make sure that everybody is well rested, not just the client, but the caregiver too. We mm -hmm. just don't want to get into a situation where someone's going to get hurt. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then the next step is as we usually after about two, three days or shifts after we've had somebody in there, we usually call them and follow up and say, how's it going? Mm -hmm. But when we ask for that feedback, please, please be honest. When I'm doing a home visit, I look at the, the person that we're taking care of. And then I look at the, the daughter or the son and I say, you know, now if she's not going to tell me, what's going on, then you need to be the one to tell me because we have to um, have that open door policy. Sure. Because if you don't tell me what's going on, I just, I just don't know. Right. Yes. And it, and it needs to be timely. Yeah. So there are a lot of times that I wouldn't say a lot of times, there are times that um, a caregiver will have been with a client for a long, long time. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, uh, the client will say, well, this happened, you know, four or five months ago and I'm really upset about it. Yes. And and we didn't know about it at the time. Mm -hmm. So if there is something to report, please report that in a timely fashion because mm -hmm. we can't fix it right. if we don't know about it. Right. Yeah. No, it's, it's very, very important for good, honest feedback. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're really good at matching personalities and skill set, but there are times that just for some reason, somebody gets under your skin mm -hmm. and, and that's okay. Oh that's yeah. Okay. That's why you have an agency <laughs> because you call us and we pull that person out. Yes. And who um, do I call when you get under my skin? Mm -mm, you're forget <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you call? Because I know I get under your skin at times. <laughs> oh, that's You and funny. Kevin probably just look at each other and roll your eyes. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no one to call there. <laughs> um, but I do talk to people at length. Please, please call us yeah. anytime. Now, um, when you're expecting that first shift to come along, <clears throat> there are things that you should do to get the house ready. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we ask is that you take valuables and important things and, and get them in a safety deposit box, any extra cash laying around. We trust our caregivers. They have gone through every single uh, background check that they can, plus with the grandma test. Mm -hmm. We have to know that these are people that we can send to our own family. It's, it's that dire important. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't want anything to be left Yes. To, to uh, guess. Well, absolutely. Because I think just as a client that has money laying out is vulnerable or jewelry or yes. things like that, the caregiver is vulnerable too, yes. right? Because yes. anytime someone new is in the house and something goes missing and we just had a situation yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, you know, everybody's going to be looking at, at each other mm -hmm. and we don't want that for our caregivers. We don't want that for our clients. So just pack it up and, and tuck it away wherever you need to. Yeah. Um, should we tell them about the, we had a, a watch go missing for a day or so. <laughs> yes. And um, <laughs> turns out, poor gal, it just, she's gotten so so thin in her arm. It just ended up all the way up by her armpit. And there it was, <laughs> covered up by clothes. Yes. And nobody knew it was there. Oh, goodness. That was a good <laughs> That was a great ending. find. Yes. <laughs> oh. But at that time, you you just like, oh, it's got to be there. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? And I'll tell you what, our caregiver went through 
all of the garbage and all of the laundry and all of the bedding and under the bed and above the bed and just knew it was there. Yay, we found it. It's like when you have your glasses on top of your head or when you're talking on your cell phone looking for your cell phone. Yes. I've done that a time like 12,000. Yes, yes. Another serious um, topic for uh, things that um, are have been a problem that we've heard from other agencies is medications, but there are ways to work around that. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a, the communication book, like you were talking earlier, a a book where everybody can document, but if there's medications that we're concerned about, we can literally write the time, the date, how many meds, Mm -hmm. um, so that there's a, a good record. Right. Love that. You know, and something that I wanted to mention is that if every family does it differently, right? So Mm -hmm. I'm sure, um, I mean, we all know I'm a bit of a control freak, (laughs) just a little bit anyway. Um, so there are some families where they want to be really on top of in control of every single thing. They want to be notified about everything. They want to be the ones to provide the forms, to provide the schedule, to provide, you know, they're doing all of that. But then on the flip side of that, we have some families that are like, Hey, homie, we're paying you to be here. (laughs) Take care of it. Do it. Right. Yeah. So they're all levels and they're all okay. Yeah. We just, we just need to know what, what yep. is expected of us and yep. and we'll get it done. That's right. That's absolutely right. So let's, let's talk a bit about, um, I guess the training that we give our people so that people can feel confident about mm-hmm. hiring us. Sure. Yeah. So when somebody works at Apaga Home Care, they have a minimum of 16 hours where they become an Apaga accredited caregiver Mm -hmm. and and they have their training. And we talk about the different payer sources. We talk about activities of daily living. We're going to go through our booklet just real quick and talk about the activities of daily living. Um, And then also after they get that accreditation, they then have eight hours of continuing education each year mm-hmm. from safety to infectious disease. You know, it just falls, depends. Slips, trips, falls. Yep. Yep. I mean, even, yeah, there's, there's always information and mm-hmm. um, sometimes it's even client specific. Mm-hmm. If there's a new, exactly. uh, a new type of a transfer or a new machine that we're using or piece of equipment, you yeah. know, we might have physical therapy come out. Um, but yeah, that eight hours of ongoing is awesome. And you actually provide, I mean, what do you, caregivers have a selection of probably upwards of 30 hours yeah. of different types of training that some they of them take. do all of it. Yes. You know, yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. How cool is it that we have some overachievers? Yeah. 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 I, I, our caregivers are really truly invested in what yeah. they do and they love to learn more yeah. because we also take care of, um, Alzheimer's and dementia, Parkinson's, mm-hmm. MS, mm-hmm. um, strokes. Yep. Um, just, uh, you know, basically I don't think, failure to thrive is not the words we use anymore, but I can't think of the way that, you know, somebody's just not doing well anymore. Mm -hmm. They're just tired. Yeah. You know, so what do we have to do to help them get through each day? So, and we have some really, really big success stories. Oh, honestly, we have one gentleman that had lived the majority of his life in a facility and wanted to come out into the community. Um, Food is a big issue for him. And thankfully, we were able to match him with a caregiver that is just a tremendous cook, um, <laughs> spends a lot of time on a specialized diet, prepping food and everything. And, and that, you know, I think, I don't know if it's been four or five years that this gentleman's been out into the community. Yeah. Um, yep. And his joy, the thing that brings him joy for the day is that food. Yep. And that's the way that he and his caregiver have bonded over mm-hmm. new recipes mm-hmm. and, and all of that. And, and it works for them. And that's great. It's, yep. it's successful for everybody then. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So back to the training. Sorry, I yep. digress. Um, so on our activities of daily living, basically what we have is some written material, but then we also have some videos that mm-hmm. people have to watch um, to learn about these different activities, which would be like your bathing, dressing, hygiene, positioning, mobility transfers, yeah. things like that. So the way that I explain it when somebody doesn't have any idea what an activity of daily living is, is I just basically say for an able-bodied person, for you or for mm-hmm. me, getting up in the morning and getting the day started, mm-hmm. uh, those are the d- things that we take for granted that yes. we can do. But there's a lot of people that are just not able to mm-hmm. get up and get going for whatever reason. And so they need that help. Like you said, the bathing, the dressing, the hygiene. Yep. Um, and that's where we train on each of those. We teach even oral hygiene, you know, mm-hmm. dentures, teeth, all of it. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we cover toes, 
toes to nose. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good job. Yep. So they get to go through that training. And, um, and a lot of times, actually, we have found that it's, it's almost a sort a little bit mm-hmm. because there are some people that will, they think that this is a profession that they want to right. learn about and be involved in. But as they start going through the training and seeing, you know, what's involved with it, um, you know, some of them basically decide maybe this isn't for me, but then others of them are like, I can't get enough of this stuff. Like I just got to just keep it coming. Yeah, no, it's true. But also to know in home care, we need every kind of personality and every kind of skill set. One time we did a training and the gal um, called me afterwards and she was, she was crying. She's like, I am so sorry that I took your time. I just can't do this. And I go, well, why not? And she goes, I simply cannot be responsible for anybody's body. I can <laughs> do uh, the laundry and I can do the dishes and I can do this and that and everything. But when it comes to being responsible, I just, I can't do that for somebody's body. Mm-hmm. And I just said, you know what? We have places like that. Oh yeah. Um, one thing I do want to go back and talk about yeah. is we are not the merry maids. Yep. We're not there just to clean the house. Mm-hmm. We will keep up the day to day stuff. Yep. Um, and we are not just a taxi, Yeah. but we will do incidental Driving, yeah, yeah, so. and that escorts, um, yeah. but not solely. Yeah, no, for that. So we have to be very careful also when people call us mm-hmm. to make sure that they fall within the parameters of what we do. Mm-hmm. And if not, then we'll help them with another resource. Sure. Yeah. 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 So um, then what we do is besides activities of daily living, then there's also the IADLs. Mm-hmm. So, Which is your shopping, yep. your laundry, your household tasks, those types of things. Yeah. Um, we do sometimes help with correspondence mm-hmm. and um, those uh, community integration, mm-hmm. getting somebody out to be able to get into the community and, and enjoy music in the park <laughs> or a drive to the lake. Yeah, that's the Go big fishing. deal. Once again, things that we take for granted as an able-bodied person, mm-hmm. somebody that just might be that joy that you bring them that day. Yeah. For a lot of people, just a drive around the lake is yeah. is such an outing and yeah. Yeah, a couple of tasks that um, I have to be very careful when I'm uh, doing these trainings and and talking to people and getting to know them better is um, housekeeping. Mm -hmm. Just because I know how to uh, clean or mop a floor doesn't mean everybody does know how to. Um, Another thing is um, cooking. Mm-hmm. not everybody is a cook yeah. and you take that for granted if yeah. it's something that you just do. But truly, um, you know, if you, if the only thing you make is top ramen, then we probably won't send you to the guy that wants <laughs> that mainly, the meals is the primary. Yeah, because it's just not going to be a good match. <laughs> yes. But um, we make sure that people do know um, how to do those basic house right. cleaning tasks and also uh, talk to them about their skills right. for homemaker or, and, and meal prep. Yeah. Well, and, and we do ask from our clients that if, if we send someone out and it's just not jiving, mm-hmm. um, then, you know, let us know and we can either do some more training on those types of things, or maybe we didn't get a good sense of what was needed in the home when we placed that person there. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, everybody's, clean is a little bit different, right? Oh, yes. I always, when I used to ask my kids if they, you know, is your bedroom clean? Oh, yeah, it's clean. Well, is it mama clean or is it <laughs> Sammy or Bailey clean? Yes. And, and, and it's different. Um, I've loved watching the evolution of Bailey in the barn um, from a younger person now to she's, you know, head boss in charge out there when on barn cleaning days and just uh, things that that you that she used to be guilty of that now she's responsible for teaching and training <laughs> the younger generation. It's just oh, kind of fun to watch. Oh, that's right. Yep, yep. That maturity for sure. Oh my goodness. Um, one part of the training that is my favorite is the diseases and behaviors in the home, mm-hmm. because if somebody's got Alzheimer's, there's an additional training that you just have to know. I can't send somebody to somebody that's never dealt with Alzheimer's mm-hmm. dementia to somebody that has that because it can be terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not just because of that, but I remember um, one of the first clients that you and I worked with when we were getting started Mm -hmm. and it was an overnight shift and there was dementia involved. Mm And um, some of the things that, that went on were really quite scary. So I had to, you know, take the time to learn more Mm -hmm. about the disease and understand um, what was going on and how to, you know, 
appropriately respond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's um, training on aggression mm-hmm. and uh, basically also emotions mm-hmm. of any, you know, can somebody taste or smell anymore? Can they hear you? Mm-hmm. Uh, their eyesight. These are all things that... Mm-hmm you have to be very, very uh, aware of. Mm -hmm. Well, and we had the opportunity to go through um, that dementia course. I don't remember what the name of it was, but essentially where we were fitted with equipment that, that simulated that dementia experience. So, So, you know, like the goggles that, that um, changed your perception and your view of things and but oh, I don't think I'm supposed to say a lot about it. But anyway, there, it was really interesting. Yeah, no, it, it really, really, your perspective, that's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Um, assisting stroke patients, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot to think about when you're dealing with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, depression mm-hmm. is a big deal. And we, um, our caregivers have to be able to see the whole picture they become our eyes and ears Mm -hmm. we're not in the field with them Mm -hmm. so these people have to tell us things that we're just like you know what that doesn't sound right I need to call the family and have them go and and do a a well person check even though we're there um, it's just like something's not right do we need to get her into the doctor you know let's get some input here let's get Mm -hmm. this conversation started sooner than later Yeah, and we also have to be kind of the parents as well with our <laughs> caregivers and making sure that we're keeping an eye on them mm-hmm. so that they're doing okay in, in situations too because there yeah. are some tough, you know, there are some tough things that we become a part of, tough situations, and we want to make sure that they're, they're not getting swallowed up. Oh, and with that is boundaries. Mm-hmm. We talk a lot about boundaries <clears throat> because going into somebody's home is a professional job. Yep. We have to remember that. Yep. Even if we're with somebody 24-7 for two or three days in a row and we take our jammers with us, mm-hmm. we have to remember that we are getting paid. We are the professional, mm-hmm. and we have to maintain that. Um, we are a little bit different here at Apaga where we understand that human connection is a big deal. Right. A lot of places are like, you will not like your person. You will not do, uh, you know, become connected with them. And we don't have that feeling. We just really have to watch, though, our caregivers' mental health Mm -hmm. because we want to make sure that um, there's the connection is healthy. Right. It's really important to be watching what they're saying, what they're doing. We have a a gentleman right now that's um, in stage hospice, and one of his caregivers has been with him for five years, Mm -hmm. and she is really verbalizing the need to be able to handle that. Mm-hmm. And I bluntly just asked her, do I need to take you out of there at this point? And, and um, part of her wants to say yes, but she just like, I can't do that to the family right, right. now. I need to see this through to the end. And um, But we're checking in on her very often. Yes, and I did hear you tell her to call us because at any moment mm-hmm. you or I will run and be by her side. Yep. Yep. That's, that's, I'm glad you brought that up. I didn't think about that. We, we, you our carriers are never alone. Mm-hmm. We're available 24 seven to them. And if they just need to vent yep. or they need to cry or they need us, mm-hmm. we are there. Yeah, absolutely. We are there. Yeah. So yeah, the boundary thing is an interesting, um, and, and I know that we've always been on the kind of on the edge of not ever doing anything inappropriate, but, um, I remember when we were first getting started with the Medicaid waiver program (laughs) and, uh, one of the social workers, well, we were caring for a lady who unfortunately in her life had made some choices that had alienated her family. Right. And, um, and she then ended up in the hospital on her deathbed, literally. And our caregiver said, I would like to go and, and see her. And I gave the permission to do that. And um, I was scolded for that, that mm-hmm. it was unprofessional. And I thought, you know, man, if that's, if we can't have a human connection, if we can't go to someone at their deathbed and, and at least show some empathy and compassion to them, then maybe that's not the right program for me. And I verbalized that <laughs> uh, as I would. <laughs> and yes. um, anyway, it didn't, it didn't go anywhere. I mean, it wasn't, we hadn't done anything wrong and I, and I stand by it. And yep. I still believe that we would always do that. Absolutely. Um, our caregivers know those, those boundary lines. And, and we do tend to be a little bit closer to our, 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 clients and families maybe than others. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think at the same time, there's a lot of communication that goes on with it because even if a caregiver gets a $5 coffee card from their client, they're calling and letting us know, Hey, this happened. I just want it on record. So it 
you know, it would never come back to bite any of us. Yeah. And yeah. those are the things that we strive for. But yeah, the human connection is we're always going to err on the side of the human connection. Yes. And I love that about us. Mm -hmm. That's what we want our clients to know is that we are just really real and there. Yeah. We're in that 150% with them. Yeah. So that's, those boundaries are a, a big deal. They are, yeah. During that tra uh, training, we also talk about things like um, elder abuse and neglect. Mm -hmm. um, incident reporting, we do take reports. If somebody has a fall or, or something happens, we document everything. Yep. Uh, prevention of fraud and financial abuse of seniors. Consumer choice and independent living philosophy. Um, and then patient confidentiality. We don't tell people who our clients are. Mm -hmm. We, we, that is it's our federal, business. it's a federal law yeah. and, um, it's our business. That's right. <laughs> right. Um, we do talk about safety. Safety is number one. There's a, a yearly training on that. Um, and we also, in case of fire, you know, just every topic. Mm -hmm. And I actually really feel, uh, way back when I took a first responders, uh, class, and um, I feel like everybody in the world needs to take a first responders class and a PCA class, mm -hmm. personal care attendant class, because we need to know how to help each other. Yes. Yeah. And I think that I'm always shocked when somebody doesn't know how to do that because it comes by nature to us. Sure. I think that's why we're <laughs> in the business we are, because we want to help others. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they don't want to help people. They just don't know how. Right. So they tend to go the other direction. <laughs> um, it, there was one time that you were a huge, um, you did a huge thing. We were at going to a conference mm -hmm. and you and I were in the airport oh. and there was this little man that was like, trying to go down the up el escalator mm -hmm. and he had his suitcase and it was you could just tell there was frustration and everybody was just too busy mm -hmm. they were walking by but you <laughs> stopped everything <laughs> and went to him and helped him get safely to the next level right and then we were able to find out that he actually had a phone yep. and we were able to call on it mm -hmm. to his his person mm -hmm. and they had just gotten split up yeah and, but you noticed that. Oh man, I was so worried about that gentleman because yeah. it's, it, he was wearing himself out and yeah. clearly there was confusion. And I mean, visually it looked like he was doing the right thing to get up the stairs. And yeah, I remember that too. And, um, I would do it again. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, then we talk about communication mm -hmm. and then customer service. Yep. That's, that's what we do. I always say we don't sell tacos or <laughs> t-shirts. Um, we, of course, have to uh, discuss diversity. And there's just more training um, besides just this. But um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I did want to say is that people need to understand that um, when we go into a person's home, we're not there to take over. Nope. We're a team. Um, the last home visit I did, the little lady looked at me and she goes, I don't want you to boss me and I don't want you to lecture me. I was like, sister, you and I are going to get along <laughs> great because that's how I want it to be too. Yes. So absolutely. it's all about teamwork and where we just, you know, we just get to know each other. We do read them. Mm -hmm. um, they might have a favorite show that they want to watch mm -hmm. and they don't like to miss it. So, and then if they're talking on their phone to their family, do we need to step in the other room? There person. are times that we give space. We're not on them right. and they are also not the hostess with the mostess. Uh, yes. Just, just let we, us be there. Right. We want our presence to not create a situation where someone feels like they've got to entertain or they have to take care of. Yes. So yeah, that reading the situation and knowing like, okay, maybe, maybe now is the time to back off just yep. a little bit. They need, need their space. And, um, you know, so from the home visit, when we learn about, Hey, he wants to be able to read his newspaper from eight to eight 30. He doesn't want any interruptions. Yep. Well, then maybe you step into the other room and mm -hmm. you're there and you're listening. Um, so, you know, you can come to the aid if needed, but yeah. Yeah. Yep. So living with a caregiver. Yeah, there's a lot to it. <laughs> for sure. But make those make a list of questions that you have for your um when you're gonna do the home visit mm -hmm. and, and just think of the expectations mm -hmm. because we can't read your mind. Right. You have to tell us. Mm -hmm. And and we get it. Yep. We get it. We know that it's a big deal for you to allow us in your home and we're honored by that. Mm -hmm. But we just need to know what we can do for you to make it the best experience under whatever circumstances. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good job. I like that topic. Yeah, it's really good. For sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we're going to wrap it up with a grandma saying. Yes. Yeah, so Peggy's grandma used to tell Peggy's mom that she was, I must have been the best parent because 
now I'm promoted to the best grandma. <laughs> <laughs> yep, best parent promoted to best grandparent. Yes, yeah. That's, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Yay, Peggy's grandma. <laughs> Cool. All right, you guys. Well, um, thanks for listening. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please go and do so. You can do that on Google Podcasts, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube, um, leave us a review, share us with your friends, go and join our Apaga Care and Share group. And um, yeah, leave us, leave us some feedback. Jo- join in the action. We love hearing from you. Yep. We want your input, mm-hmm. uh, topics, all of it. Yep. Just give it to us. We'll take it and run. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Have a good day.